Dear friends, hello. Today we have a very interesting guest from Germany. His name is Stefan Pritsche. He is general manager of monastery, of uh, monastery uh, brewery. It is located in Neuzelle. This is a town very close to Berlin. Hello, yes, nice exactly. to see you, Stefan. My pleasure to see you. Thank you so much for joining us today. No, okay. thanks you. Uh, thank you for inviting me, and uh, yes, and, and thank you for uh, having this nice conversation with you, Olga. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Then, Stefan, we would like to ask you a few questions. Since your business is around 500 years old, or maybe even more, so it's a very, very old business, and always it's very interesting. So you're having a brewery, a place where they, you're making beer, and it's very close to the monastery. Number one, I want to know why it is located close to the monastery. No, actually, uh, the monks were looking for a place where the best resources are. And uh, so they started about uh, 500 years ago, very close in the middle of Germany. And they were getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so they wanted to, to explore the world a little bit more. And so they are uh, founding a daughter company, somehow daughter company, daughter monastery here in Neuzelle, which is close uh, to Berlin, about 100 kilometers east side from Berlin. And uh, they founded one monastery, which was getting very, very big. It is one of the biggest, and I would say one of the um, uh, best uh, in shape uh, monasteries, as you can imagine here in Germany. Uh, it's now even uh, renovated and restored with about 80 million uh, euros a year uh, by the German government. And they founded this monastery and it was getting bigger, bigger, bigger. And they are um, having also a very huge forest here. So they were developing quite a very successful business. And after about 400 years, there was a secularization because they were so successful. Uh, the government thought it would be nice to take everything away. And it was about 1850 they started, and they have to calculate like uh, two years what they have for this, uh, what they're owning. And after two years of calculating, they were able to give everything uh, to the government, and this was called the secularization of uh, in Brandenburg or in Germany. So it was uh, taken away from the monks, and then it was uh, um, owned by the government. It was uh, for rent for some people, of course. And uh, then there was some, some, some kind of wars, of course. Uh, it was taken away from the owners uh, several times. Uh, they were sent to prison every time. The political system was changing. It was uh, uh, taken away. And um, so there was some, you know, many, many people, uh, by the way. And then there was the GDR time. It was a Volkseigener Betrieb. It was owned also again by the government. And after the reunification, my father was able to buy this monastery brewery here in Zeller. And so we are one of the first persons who is now able to own this brewery. And we hope uh, there will be not um, a political change uh, in, the, in the close future. Because as you know, I, as usually, because everybody wants to, uh, to drink beer. It seems to be like this. And, but... Uh, what also happened, what was very, very nice in the year 2018, about uh, 2019, uh, the monks, which were now located in Austria, uh, were thinking about coming back. So after 200 years of secularization, the monks decided to come back here to the Ort uh, Neuzelle, to the town Neuzelle. And uh, uh, now they are back, so we have right now about six monks, Sister Zienzen, Sister Zienzen monks, who are now populating uh, the town and the monastery even. And uh, because the town is so crowded, as I said, I you know for me it's kind of uh, funny, of course, because it's not so crowded actually, but uh, and uh, to work here. So they're even building a second monastery it's the same place here in Zelle, so it's unbelievable. Now we have, uh, uh, we will have two monasteries on one place, which is unbelievable because even this one monastery has now uh, two churches. It has a Lutheran church and it has also a Catholic church on the same place. 
Interesting, very interesting. Stefan, tell me please, since it's a very old business and it belongs to your father and you're working with your father, normally people say that it is very difficult to be part of family business because it's not only business, but it is also family. But now there are so many family businesses in the world. I know, for example, there is a big association of family business in Kazakhstan and many countries become uh, family. What do you see? What are pluses and minuses when it is a family business? No, family business in general are the most successful business um, in the world and, and in general. Uh, because if you have a kind of a shareholder business, uh, for example, you try to get as much money out of the company as possible, of course. Uh, and the people who are working within a shareholder's company, uh, they are focused at, on this year, on this decade, maybe maximum this decade. And uh, they will do business because they will have a huge turnover, for example. They don't care so much about the profit. Uh, they, care, uh, they care more about the turnovers, about getting provision because of the sales numbers. If you have a family owned business, for example, uh, like we have, uh, we, we bought the brewery about you know, a little bit over 20 years now. And every money, every, 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 just every money which we, which we earned, we spent back into the brewery. So we are investing about 1 million euro every year inside the brewery, uh, just to, to keep the brewery in a very good shape. Uh, not to make it, um, to make it faster, not to make it uh, uh, more productive, or, but uh, to make it more, uh, more special, I would say, because, uh, we are exporting quite a lot also of our products. And if you want to export, you must have a very high level, uh, not only on innovations, uh, you have also a very high level of uh, quality of the product. That means it must be very clean. Um, it must be, uh, it has to be a long shelf life, for example. Um, we have a shelf life of one year. So we export uh, to, to Russia, mainly right now to Russia, by the way. Uh, we export a little bit also to Japan, of course, uh, to China, to Sweden, to Finland. So we're exporting our products worldwide. And you can do this only if you have the best beer, the best quality beer of the world. Uh, of course, this is the, the, the mandatory fact to have the best quality. But we try also to have some, some innovations, but we may talk about this later maybe. Great. So, uh, you know, it's interesting that you sell and you export your business to Russia, to Japan and to other countries, but Russia is a very big buyer for you. Tell me, please, about building a brand. Like your brewery is quite famous in Neuzelle, in Germany, and now you send your beer also to uh, different countries. Uh, what do you think? What is the main secret to make a good brand? No. Just let me uh, tell one, one, one story about also working as a family owned uh, company because I, I was not um, 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 explaining this um, uh, too much. But uh, the, the most advantages, of course, uh, to work as a family owned company is that we have, uh, we are go going both, my father and me, we're going both in the same direction. Uh, we have different kind of um, positive effects, we have uh, different uh, strengths. Uh, which we are using and um, there's no competition between us uh, both because we want to develop the company in general and this is a totally different goal then you have to fight against people inside the company i see i was working as a consultant he was working as, an, uh, as a consultant at different companies and uh, we, we saw that many people inside companies are fighting against each other if you're a family-owned uh, company it's more like a huge family you are treating um, the people who are working inside the family totally different. You take care about their families, about their kids. Uh, they may bring the, the, the kids even uh, into our place. Um, and uh, if, if they have some special things which they want, uh, it's much more easier to solve any problems in a, in a family um, a company. Also, when I think about people who are working here in the company, uh, they're not working here in the first generation, some, some of them are working in the third generation, even here in the same company. So uh, they're not producing the beer of some shareholder. They're producing their own beer. They are proud of their own beer. They're proud of their own products. And this is, of course, uh, totally different. 
What makes us... Uh, Stefan, uh, I'm sorry, what yeah. is the name of your beer? Uh, the name of the beer is, for example, Schwarzer Abt, uh, Kirschbier, uh, Badebier, um, you know, cherry beer, for example, strawberry beer, potato beer. So we had produced anti, even anti-aging beer, by the way. Uh, oh, let's see, anti-aging beer, anti-aging beer. Well, actually, I have some of them here. <laughs> anti-aging beer is looking like this. So uh, we are putting spirulina inside. Uh, we are putting some hot spring water inside. We have minerals inside. Uh, we have even algae. And I think the most breweries are quite happy that they don't have any algae inside as a beer. But we put them additionally uh, because we think uh, the vitamins and the minerals are quite healthy. And so we try to do a beer, which is, uh, in general, is better than the rest of all the other beers. Uh, uh, we don't think good, good, um, um, good nutrition doesn't mean you go in the shop, buy the cheapest, the cheapest meat, the cheapest beer, and then buy a pack of a tablet, or buy a pack of uh, supplements, vitamins. You should just eat normal food, uh, eat and drink normal beer, and you should stay healthy. Of course, don't drink too much alcohol because alcohol is always a poisoning stuff. Uh, so yeah, again, sometimes try to... Uh, yeah. Your beer sounds like a, a, a very positive thing, anti-aging, strawberry. It sounds like, a, you know, something, even when you drink beer, you will become more healthy. Uh, yes, good. almost. Right. We, are, we, are, we are many, many um, TV stations are coming here uh, to this place because they cannot believe that uh, these kind of beers we're actually doing. For example, we have also one bottle of beer we call Bath beer. So it's a beer for the banya, for the, for the spa. And this is sold also worldwide in the spa areas, in the, in the, uh, in the, the, in the hot springs, in the, in the, in the, in the yes, spa, in the five-star hotels. They're using this for, for bathing and for, for uh, washing the hair. Because as you know, uh, people like to, to, to wash their hair with beer, also with eggs. And we were developing an own product just for uh, these kind of uh, people, for this kind of uh, wellness centers. Because if you have a woman, uh, she likes to have probably a milk bath, a milk bath. She likes to have something which is more connected to, to Egypt, uh, with flowers, with roses, with stuff like this. But if you have a man and you want to invite a man into the wellness area, you think, oh, come on, this is, this is gold stuff. So we thought how to get the man into the wellness area. Of course, you must have a flat screen TV for looking, for looking the football world championship, for example. He must have brown colors instead of pink colors, and he must have a beer instead of uh, a milk. So this is the point how to attract people even how to attract men the first time in the wellness areas. <laughs> this is funny, this is interesting, this is very creative uh, from your point of view and your family is doing great, I'm happy because in many families, kids are fighting, fathers are fighting with their children and what you say that you're doing very good along and you're trying, it's also great. And I like that three generations of people working at your brewery, it speaks for itself. Uh, let's say now about the brand. I understand that you, have different things to grow your brand, yeah? It's like using the beer in the spa, strawberry, anti-aging. But what do you think? What is your biggest uh, problem when building the brand? And what is your biggest success? Now let's start with success because I don't see many problems. When I talk to other breweries, they're just telling me about their problems. Uh, the product is too cheap, for example, they want to produce even more uh, and, and they try to buy more breweries, by the way. And uh, the most times, other breweries, in my opinion, are just yelling about problems in the world. And uh, maybe because we are both not from this business, we didn't see any problems. Uh, we just saw the vision. We saw the vision of the name Monastery. Monastery. And this is the biggest advantage also of the, of the brewery. Uh, if I go worldwide to some place, let's say, for example, I was, um, I was calling to America and I said, no, actually, uh, my name is Stefan and I want to sell beer. And they said, oh, okay, who not? There are many, many brewers in the world who want to sell beer. I said, no, yes, of course. Uh, then I said, oh, I'm a, a German brewery. Okay, German brewery is a little bit better because German is kind of uh, the source of the beer. Uh, they invented the beer. I said, oh, yes. 
Uh, but there are a lot of breweries who have pro problems also in Germany. They have an overproduction. And then I said, I have a monastery brewery. And said, oh, this is interesting. Monastery breweries, they're just a handful of breweries worldwide who are able to call themselves monastery. Um, and the first person said immediately, okay, you may come, I invite you to America or I may come to your place because that sounds interested, uh, interesting because you are a monastery brewery. Um, and this is the point, without even telling um, how we produce, without even spending one, one euro, one dollar, one ruble, uh, one yen, for any marketing material, uh, just by calling the name Monastery Brewery, the people know this has to be the best beer of the world because these guys were inventing the beer. And this is the biggest advantage of, of, of the brand, which without paying any money for the brand, the brand is already uh, placed in the market. This, is also, this also means, of course, that other monastery breweries uh, who are on the market trying to, um, uh, to fight for this name. So there will be no new brewery in the world who's able to call themselves monastery brewery without having this tradition. So um, it's impossible. So you may have, a, um, I don't know, you, must, uh, you can have a, a, a castle brewery, uh, a sea brewery. I don't know, you can have any, a king brewery. You may have any brewery in the world, but not a monastery brewery because this is just a handful. And even more and more uh, of them are very small and, and not doing so many things in the world. It's, it's even getting more worthful. And this is a point, uh, as you see also in the background, uh, the monastery. This is a monastery brewery, by the way. Uh, there's a monastery. And um, this is a point, um, the, the, the town where we are now located is one of the biggest uh, tourist attraction inside Germany. Uh, it's not so well known, by the way, uh, by the Chinese, not yet. But we have, for example, here also uh, international school, boarding school. And we have already people from all over the world who are coming here to the private school uh, and doing some lessons uh, from, from, from Arab countries, uh, from Chinese countries, mainly also from Chinese countries, from Russian countries, uh, of course, from Poland, from Germany, some of them. So it, it's an international boarding school with about 600 people, um, which, which shows also how attractive this, this town is already. And with the tourists, uh, right now, it's unbelievable how many people are coming. On the one hand, because it's a monastery, now because of the, the monks, which are here since about two years, it's getting even worse. Worse means, of course, for me, very good, uh, because now also the Christian uh, um, community, society, is also coming. Uh, we are in all of these uh, publications of the Catholic networks, even the Papst Franciscus, the actual Papst, um, he is a member of uh, the fan club of Neuzelle, uh, the supporting club of Neuzelle. Uh, it's unbelievable uh, how many support we get from, from all over the world. And if you know that uh, East Germany is kind of atheistic country, and um, it's, it's, it's maybe it's more clear why everybody is so fascinated that inside Brandenburg, inside the old GDR area, there's a, new, um, there's a new fountain of, of, um, of, of Christianity. I would say this is kind of a thing which is very fascinating for, for many, many people that um, someone was building here a new structure. And of course, we have operas here. We have festivals here. Of course, 2020, it's a little bit more slow here. It's, it's not so much uh, tourists here right now. So actually... If you want uh, to visit, and I said it, it's the best time to come now because uh, it's it's not so crowded. Um, yeah, but it's a very fascinating town. I can see that you are a big fan of Neuzelle. You love your town, and you you oh, you really promote it very well uh, on the tourist market of the world. You're doing it great, and that's very nice. And that's my last question. I like very much uh, your attitude. You said you don't want to talk about problems because the problems are everywhere and you want to concentrate on the best points and of your town, of your brewery. And that's amazing. It's actually a very positive approach. And I think we need that now because 2020 is not only bad news, there are also good news. How you will recommend to people who just starting their business and they're afraid to start because they say we are in a very 
challenging situation. There are less money than normal. All people are in the masks. There are many people are afraid of virus. So it's definitely turbulent times and challenging times. Uh, what do you think if you just start your business? Of course. Is there any right. chance for success or it's very, you will not recommend to do it? This is a very interesting question, of course. Um, if you would like to start, or if you started this year, beginning of this year, a restaurant, a bar, a hotel, I would say I'm very sorry for you because uh, no, sometimes things in life can happen that this was ex definitely not the best uh, starting point to start this kind of business. But as usual, um, something is getting broken something is, is, is starting new. And uh, I would say, as we see right now, everything is developing so fast, so quickly, with so much innovation. We never had in the world so many innovations as we see now. Uh, let's say, I would even say the whole, the whole way how we work is changing. Um, when I saw like one or two years ago, let's say two years ago, uh, we tried to, to have homework. We tried to have uh, uh, the people may also work from home to, 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 to combine family and work. Uh, people said, no, come on, this is not possible uh, because I have to see my colleagues. I have to see everybody. Uh, I have to have a, a room in, in the office, for example. I have to have an own desk, own table, own chair. And even the programs are way bad. There are a lot of problems with the programs. They're not working very well. Uh, suddenly in the middle of 2020, it was like, oh, you have a program which works at about 10%, maybe 20%. Well, that's cool. It's, it's, I can work somehow with this program. So um, suddenly these programs were able to develop immediately. Um, the expectations was not so high. They were not comparing with a normal work. Suddenly huge companies also think about, you know, why, why should we why we should we rent a huge company, why we should rent a huge office. We may let the people work, uh, let's say half of our employees may work from home. Uh, suddenly everything is possible. So as you see, um, in, in all aspects of life, even with education of kids, for example, uh, I have four kids, now they are learning from home many, many times. Of course, you must have computers, which, which is very, very important without computers. Um, it will be a huge uh, problem for, for families without a computer. Uh, we have to take care about this problem, uh, this really problem. But in general, uh, it could mean that even for people living outside the school system, uh, it's now easier to, to connect to school uh, areas because if you're living in a small town in the middle of nothing, it was not possible maybe to go for the kids to go to school. But suddenly with Wi-Fi, with internet, with a computer, even for them, it's possible to, to, to share the, the, the community, uh, to take part in the community. So in all aspects, uh, we have suddenly be totally different. Of course, we, do, we don't want to change our life. Uh, uh, we as persons, we as humans, we want to stay as we are. Uh, but uh, the enemy of the good things is the better things, in my opinion. So um, it... it takes for us, we need some energy to move from this level to another level. We don't want to change, uh, but it's worth to, to use this energy to go the next step. And then we can, we can even invent new, new stores. We can, uh, for example, when you see uh, the online area, the parcel area, the delivering area, we are right now, we are delivering so many things online with the online shop, klosterbrauerei.com. Suddenly, uh, the sales were boosting up like like uh, never before. This is just because people think, oh come on! I was I was trying to promote this business many many years. Of course, it was developing step by step by step by step. And people ask me why you are, uh, how can you achieve that people are ordering beer uh, by by DHA by post? As you know, of course, it's much more easier because to carry thirty bottles of beer or twenty bottles of beer. No, just let some other people do this for you and we will send even without any freights, uh, without any additional cost to the end customer. And suddenly people are saying, no, this is the best beer. But before you can do this, you have to develop an online store. You have to develop this business. You must be ready to go the next step. And I know many, many brewers who are just trying to sell the beer 
normally as before they will die uh, there will there will be many many people uh, who will not survive this this crisis but somehow some of them were sick already before and um, everything now is 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 uh, is like like a catalysator like uh, like 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 turbo so it's it's the, the speed of developing in all areas is much faster because of the crisis the good things and the bad things also so, you know, what you're saying is very interesting and I like that you are very positive. Thank you. <laughs> Even though, as you said, that some people unfortunately will die, they will not be able to adjust. I mean, not die, but their businesses will die because yes. they not yes. work all time because the whole world is so changing so drastically, so quickly that we don't have time to think. Sometimes we need to act, but it, it's very good that you take it um, positively and that you are ready for changes and as I understand it doesn't mean are you 18 years old or are you 50 years old you can do it at any time and the great yes, thing is your definitely. partner who is the owner of the business and who is also managing to adjust to the situation so it's not about the age it's about the way of thinking and the way of adjusting and uh, to sum up our talk i like also very much what you said about the brand that sometimes only by three sentences you can say about the brand more than writing a big book like my brewery is in germany is in neuzeli and it is a monastery brewery so only by this you already narrow the meaning and you put the level and sometimes this is enough when you're looking for investors or for partners or let's say you want to sell the business that is already like a very good um, branding for your business a very good yes, exactly. way of putting it in a quick and short way and uh, the last sentence what you will recommend to our audience from moscow from kazakhstan from dubai from oman what you can uh, um, your wish from noitseli to them no, this is very easy uh, because uh, Neuzelle has a partnership with a school with Moscow, with Russia. So we have a partnership with Oman. My kids were many, many times in Oman, uh, by the way, and we had also invited some people from Oman, probably also from Kazakhstan. So I would say uh, as a recommendation, just, just try to be a little bit relaxed. Uh, no, I would say like I, I am living somehow. I try to change things which I may change and uh, uh, I try to survive the things I cannot change. No, no some, some things I cannot change. So I try to be positive and relaxed and I try to, to see the difference uh, which, which one I should change and which not. And uh, I would also say if, if you are um, try to relax, um, it will be the same 24 hours for everybody and you may you may be scared the 24 hours you may be uh with with, um, with bad ideas with bad thoughts all the day or you may try to find a way through this jungle of crisis you might find uh, some things in your life um, which are nice you know um to 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 um, to have your family for example to have some good times also with the family to to use also sometimes maybe with friends you know cl closer now to friends and so use also some positive uh, effects of the crisis. And I would say uh, this is uh, somewhat also the point because crisis will be all over at the time. It will, be, it will not stop this year. We had crisis before, like 1980. Uh, we have crisis uh, in, in 2000. I remember 2000, everybody was afraid of about 2000. Uh, um, and uh, there will be crisis in, in the future, of course. Um, but try also uh, to to not let the negative uh, thoughts um, run your life. This is uh, somehow the point. And uh, of course, whenever you want, you may come to Netzelle and have a good time here. <laughs> wonderful. This is wonderful. Thank you so much. So everybody is invited to Neuzelle and this is wonderful place. Thank you so much for your positive energy and good luck to your business and to your family. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being with us, Stefan. That is okay, big. Bye -bye. Thank you. See you. Talk to you soon. See you. See you.